Welcome to the first, very first episode of Real Movers. I couldn't think of a better person to interview today for Real Movers than an old friend when I first arrived in Cambodia, uh, who was so kind and helpful uh, for me to help start my business and has been so helpful uh, as well over the last 16 years that I've been here. And I want to thank you for that, Ritz. Thank you. Welcome to the show. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, you know, <laughs> okay, to bring nice me to up here. You. Yeah. <laughs> I want to go back a little bit uh, because uh, Ritz is the uh, group CEO of Forte Insurance. Forte Insurance is the most successful insurance company in Cambodia by far. It has uh, a 45% market share. Out of 18 players in the market, 45% market share, which means the next 17 have 55 which gives you an idea of just how big Forte uh, Insurance is and how successful they've been over the years. But people don't realize your, your roots go back in insurance, I mean, way, way back mm -hmm. when insurance was just starting in Cambodia. And if yeah. I remember correctly, you once told me you underwrote the first insurance policy in Cambodia. It, that's so how true. far back does this go? And how did you get into this business that didn't exist at the time? And you decided I'm going to make a career of a business that doesn't exist. I still remember that I issued the policy on Monday, 13 June, 1994. Was there any insurance law at the time? Uh, no, no, no insurance law. No insurance law, but they have one practice from, from Ministry of Economic and Finance during the period called Ministry of Finance that all the cargo imported over in Cambodia, they have to tax on CIF. What made you get into an industry that didn't exist? I graduated in 1991, that uh, in July 1991. And at the time I posted in Ministry of Finance. And then in Ministry of Finance, I was put in one place where is, uh, they are looking to a job for me because Ministry of Finance have received a graduate university every year from Ministry of Planning and some people they have a post, some people not. I in the group of do not have clear post for me to sit. I sit over there and then uh, in 1994 when they established the state-owned company, therefore I moved to the state-owned company called Caminco. And then I start to read about insurance. Forte Insurance is now celebrating 25 years yep. uh, in the business mm -hmm. uh, as one of the first insurance companies. I remember when I came here in 2009, there were only uh, five. So, yeah. so now there's 18. So it really shows how Forte has one of the, the first starters. How has Forte been so successful over these 25 years to keep 45% market share? I think um, 25 years that why we successful, I think one thing that our focus is human resource development. I think this is the key of successful of Forte. Uh, when we start, because the insurance is very new in Cambodia, a lot of people don't understand the insurance. Even our staff do not understand about insurance. We need to provide them a training. A training that make us human capacity building is to make us successful until now. We build confidence, confident to staff, confident to client and con confident to stakeholder. Mean that uh, the reinsurer, um, the um, business partner in overseas. That, that, that's how we are successful. And we establish our anger very strong because our full takes are really strong. I can say that we have a staff that working with Forte over 25 years because previous, previous uh, me join also Forte have been easy. They got a license, but they don't uh, register. Right. Yeah, therefore we, we, our human capacity building take very long up to now. Cambodia is a very um, transitory market with mm. zero unemployment. Effectively, people move a lot. Yeah. How do you keep your employees and what value do they get out of your training? I think we are looking into professional training that we link with um, um, the Insurance Institute in the region like uh, Malaysia Insurance Institute, 
um, Singapore Insurance Institute, and then after that we continue move to the international one, like Enzip from Australia or the chapter from UK that we provide a training. I think this is the hard skill training on uh, insurance business. After that, we provide a soft skill training as well. There are currently 18 general insurers in the market. Uh, as we mentioned before, 75% uh, of the market share is with five players. Mm. So the rest of the 13 having 24%. I've seen even some of those players having less than 1% market share, which mm makes it hard for me to believe that survival uh, in the mm -hmm. long term is uh, feasible. Do you see any possibility of um, mergers and acquisition activity in the market, uh, especially for that lower tier? I, I think this is the trend of developing a financial market. At the start, every people feel that, you know, this is a good opportunity uh, to invest in financial market like a financial industry like uh, in strength or bank. But I think when we start to operate, it's not really uh, what called easy uh, to operate. Therefore, some that cannot get a market share. And if you don't have a market share, probably, you know, the, the capital investment will be deteriorated from year to year because you make loss. And then this is where the M&A is coming. I think this is the normal trade uh, m a coming. I foresee that within two to three years, there, there will be some m a coming. One is a merger among a player in the market or another uh, operate, uh, another insurance company uh, from region or from the global uh, can come to Cambodia to look into you know, opportunity in Cambodia because they have experience they have a deep pocket, they have a capital, they have a human capital, that's very important. And then they can bring and then they can grow the market together. I, I'm gonna pull up a quote uh, that I saw that you made that said, uh, Cambodia is one of the most underinsured uh, mm. markets in the region. Yeah. Uh, with, uh, I guess, a penetration rate of about 1% and mm. per capita about $28. Yeah, which is really low comparative mm -hmm. to uh, the rest of the region. What are the challenges in the insurance industry to uh, have people buy basic insurance for their property, which is kind of normal in the Western world mm -hmm. to cover your house, to cover your car, to cover your health? Mm -hmm. um, what are the challenges in Cambodia for converting people to understand the value of insurance and the importance and criticality of it? Mm -hmm. I think the challenge of insurance one is the insurance business over in Cambodia is still in use, very new. If you look at 2013 up to now, it's 21, 21 years. The history after the war, that very new. We look at the, the, the country in even Laos, they are stopped earlier than us. They, they have a, like 30 year history. Um, Vietnam, they already have insurance. Thailand is, I think, I look at a history of insurance in Thailand one century already, Europe for a century, but Cambodia just uh, the youngest one in the market. Therefore, the understanding about the benefit of insurance for their life, they, uh, you know, daily life or their business is limited. I think still limited. Therefore, right now we put a lot of effort to educate um, the, the people, uh, where I said we look, uh, educate uh, the u university people or community to understand about insurance. And another one is a legal framework as well. I can say that we do not have complete legal framework to push more to uh, grow in insurance. In the globe, insurance penetration is about 7% of the GDP of the globe. I think the record that I have in mind about 7 trillion and the GDP of the globe is about 100 trillion. We are back in 19, uh, 2019. Well, we, we, we have a lot of things to do to grow the market. What makes Cambodia a attractive investment destination? I think uh, make Cambodia attractive for investment is the legal framework. One is uh, if we have very strong legal framework, therefore 
the investor, they are able to calculate the risk and award. I think this, this, this is very important to investor. And another one, I think the human resource capacity, we need to build our own human resource capacity that, you know, they establish the factory in Cambodia, if they hire the, the technical skill staff from overseas, they need to pay lodging, they need to pay labor, work permit, they need to pay many, many things. Therefore, make our product is more um, the high price. Another one is, I think, the energy level. If you want to look into this one, the energy level, that another area that, you know, government should look into this because our energy cost for investors still high. And the fourth one, I think that look into the logistic. It's a energy and logistic is a linking. I think our logistic still in the highest one and still fragmented. It's not integrated. I think this uh, area that we, we should, I, I, I feel that the four components that make Cambodia more attractive to others. Rith, I want to thank you again for being our first guest mm. on Real Movers. Okay. That's, uh, I couldn't think of anybody better to have an interview with than somebody I've known that's been a real impactful leader, uh, with, uh, has given uh, inspiration uh, to Cambodians, uh, starting from a very humble career to where you've now group CEO of the largest insurer in Cambodia. So that's been a phenomenal story. And uh, you are a real mover. And, okay. uh, and I want to thank you for being <laughs> oh, my first thank guest. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank Anthony, you. I think uh, you are our first friend <laughs> that, uh, you know, when he's come to Cambodia, we always get together, together. We exchange our idea how to grow the business. I think uh, where we are now, Anthony also, he grow very fast as well. I think he's very brave to, you know, to exit from very stable income and come to his own venture and now you are and thank you Anthony for to have me in your first episode thank you this has been real movers thank you for joining us see you next week